Even on one of their last royal engagements, Harry was going to talk to someone across the room, and Meghan stood there in her place, pulling him away like a dog on a leash. This is something that happens at any event they attend. Clearly, Harry's image is associated with controversial decisions and distance from royal responsibilities. And now, rumors that Harry may be suffering from domestic violence have surprised and angered the public. Is this a new chapter in the dramatic and complex novel of his life, or is it simply a new trick to attract pity and sympathy? When looking back at Harry's choices and actions, many people have to say that this suffering is definitely the inevitable consequence of the hasty and stupid decisions that he made himself. There are multiple photographs available of Harry's damaged hands and face, as in it appears that someone has hit him, hard. One psychology professor has labeled Harry and Meghan's relationship as narcissistic codependency. Victims of narcissistic abuse have noted Meghan's similarities to their own abuse survival tales, and Meghan's own family believes she has narcissistic personality disorder. Many say Meghan is emotionally abusing Harry, isolating him from his family, and exploiting him for financial advantage. This is unfortunately fairly prevalent, and it is sometimes overlooked when the abuser is female, like in the famous example of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. My own belief is that Meghan is most likely emotionally torturing Harry in order to cause him to despise and lie about his family. Meghan has already made false statements and threatened the royal family, and she abandoned her father while he was dying of two heart attacks. How much worse would she treat her own husband? Not to mention her employees described her as an unhinged sociopath who tormented and abused them so severely that half of them quit. If a woman treats other people this way, she is likely to treat her husband in the same manner. Keep in mind that abusive relationships and narcissists excel at concealing in plain sight. When it comes to narcissism and abuse victims, former family members and victims like Megan should never be ignored. Megan's abuse victims, her colleagues and family, have attempted to warn us about who she is. Soon Megan will be hit by karma. Meghan did not settle well into the royal family and was having angry tantrums that the family was not able to handle. Meghan was older and set in her ways, not making it easy to adapt. When Harry and Meghan left for the U.S., they wanted publicity to assist in earning a living, and instead of telling it how it was, she blamed the royal family and showed herself in a good way. I can understand why Harry and Meghan did the Oprah interview in the hope that eventually they would not have to survive on handouts from the royal family. As Prince Philip said very wisely, it is like a TV drama. It is terrible that they chose his last moments to disrespect the royal family. Shame on Harry and Meghan. Harry's whole life he has been protected and somewhat coddled by royal handlers. He has no street smart, which leaves him out on land being directed by his wife. She's telling him, and he's following because he's never really had to do anything for himself. No matter what he says now... I think she has God knows what over him, and it must be so much worse than what they are throwing at the royal family. He is a miserable slob with no friends or family, except surrogacy laws are different in the US and can be upheld more easily than in the UK, so it might work this time, unless someone pays the surrogate more than the non-disclosure is worth talk. It seems Meghan has Harry convinced that he's actually a failure who must depend on her to guide him through life as he is incapable of functioning on his own. It is called gaslighting. Look it up and you'll understand. Why else is she always charging ahead in any situation, leading him by the hand as one would do with a child? Certainly, Harry was under her thumb from the get-go. Just look at the absence of his friends, particularly long-standing army ones, at the wedding. I was a little surprised that the likes of Usain Bolt, with whom Harry had a great fun relationship, was not invited. Only poor Chelsea Davy, and that was just insecure Meghan's way of rubbing it in. She would not have wanted some celebrity friend of Harry to get more publicity than her. If you look closely, it seems like Harry is mentally ill. I must say that is probably the best explanation for the complete change in his behavior. I did not watch Netflix Doco, but watched Bradby's interview and snippets of his other interviews. He looked spaced out nervous. His thoughts were all over the place. He had trouble stringing sentences together, and at times they didn't make sense. His eyes were darting all over the place, his eyes at times glazed over. He has suddenly become extremely traumatized by his life. His book well don't even go there. A lot of the stories were inappropriate, some downright nasty. And what's with rubbing the nose all the time? 
The rapid speech worries me the most as that usually indicates a crash is coming. It's painful watching him as I fear he is very ill. I hope he is not paying for the psycho babble therapy he is getting in the U.S. as it is making him worse. I might also add, if he is on medication, the alcohol and drug taking will be counterproductive to the medication doing its job. He is impulsive. He is unable to remain focused. He is not too bright, which may be because of ADHD, ADD. He has a lot of energy. He gets easily distracted. He is unable to put his thoughts together. He is quick to anger. He blames others. He is unable to detect the truth. He falls for anyone with a sob story. His whole life is filled with a lot of drama. Mentally ill is a scary term, in my opinion. I once learned from a friend who is a psychiatrist that it is best to approach mental health in the same manner as physical health. While some of us may have less mental health than others, this does not always imply that you are mentally ill or that you have a particular diagnosable ailment. Similar to how obesity and high blood pressure may not be healthful conditions, they do not necessarily indicate a person is ill, so too can mental health issues. From what he has written in his book, it is evident that Harry has a number of these problems. For example, he has never really moved over the loss of his mother or the responsibility he places on her. He still harbors unresolved emotions for his father. He describes how, while attending Eton, he experienced sentiments of being overmatched and inadequate in comparison to his peers. He has been quite candid about his panic attacks and anxiety ever since coming back from Afghanistan. And while he doesn't admit it, it appears likely that he fears losing Megan in the same way that he lost his mother. Whilst I think it would be unnecessarily pejorative to describe him as mentally ill, I think even he would probably freely concede that he is not in robust mental health and a number of issues affect him. Although he may have personal failings, I don't detect a lack of self-awareness of mental health issues among them. So how did Harry get to this point? It originates from arrogance, stupidity, greed, and jealousy. He believed his own hype. He seemed to think he could cherry-pick the events his wife fancied gracing with her presence while marching the royal family for financial gain. He is extremely petty and small-minded, entitled and jealous. Hey. He has clearly always been jealous of his brother and expects whatever he has to come to him too. He is also stupid. He was warned about his wife by family and friends. She is a malicious gold digger with serious personality issues and an inflated opinion of herself. He allowed her to stalk him and manipulate him in places like Soho House. I suspect she claimed a pregnancy to force his hand. He added to his own misery by trying to damage his family to get petty revenge and make money. His stupidity and hypocrisy are now making him a laughingstock. All that silly whining about Papa and brother, who seem to be doing pretty well without him or his hideous wife. What makes Harry even more stupid is not realizing how fortunate he is to have his gilded lifestyle. His outlook is definitely that of glass half empty, not glass half full, the fool. Now that he's had a rude awakening in the real world with his vulgar and crass other half, he has to live with his poor decisions. He may have the safety net of his royal family, but he's caused irreparable damage. His father overindulged him what he wanted he got. He never paid for a thing, not even a mobile phone. Like when Tyler Perry loaned him $7 million to buy the estate, he just thought that was a gift he didn't have to pay it back. His father paid for the 4.2 million pounds alteration on Frogmore and gave him the money to pay it back. Harry paid back 68,000 pounds, kept the rest, and then they found no of the alterations had been done. Megan took 10 million pounds worth of jewelry and said she lost it. When they left, they stole 30 million pounds and took money from royal charities. MI6 went and got one of the most expensive tiaras back she took. He wants police protection and money titles, but wants to abuse the family pair of utterances. I like to use a word beginning with C, ending in T, with two letters in the middle. Megan and Doria are evil. Unhappy, uneducated, unintelligent, unkind, unemployable, ungrateful under the thumb, unable to behave like a decent human being. Unimportant, unimpressive, untruthful, undeniably traitorous, unstoppably ignorant, etc. There's more I could add to that. Do any of these attributes sound like they describe someone who is well? Well, that's all for today's video. Thank you very much for watching our video, and I want to know what you think about these issues. Please express your opinion in the comments below. Hope you will always be cheerful and happy. Don't forget to support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. Goodbye and see you again in the next videos.